What? That one was nasty. <laughs> it's for a very. What are you doing? I think it was the year old egg. Good morning. We are out here in the chicken coop. We have a ton to get done today. One of the best parts of spring in Alaska is these ladies are laying like crazy. Spring chickens lay lots and lots and lots of eggs and the challenge is figuring out what to do with them. Back. hens right now because they're broody and I keep stealing their eggs. So let's go check out the first way to preserve these eggs long term. One of the oldest ways of preserving eggs that I have found is with lime eggs, also known as water glassing. And what I have here is year old eggs that have been water glassed. I already opened them up. There's zero scent coming from this whatsoever. The eggs are still good and we had to work our way through. This is all I have left of last year's eggs. These were actually jarred. I like to use these plastic lids. 3-6-2023 to 3-9-2023. I like to date them and know exactly how old the eggs are. And by the end of this video, we're gonna taste test one of these versus a fresh egg. Now, let me show you how to lime an egg. Here's all the supplies you're going to need. Some lime, calcium hydroxide, or cal lime, C-A-L lime, and this is food grade. I get this from Azure. I'm gonna leave a link for you in the description box. If you use my code, I do get a kickback on that. However, it is really good quality and it has worked fantastic since last year. The first thing we're going to do is measure out the lime. I need one ounce of this for each quart size jar. Let me get one ounce. Two, that's 0.9, so it's just over two tablespoons. And I'm gonna get water in here from the sink. Now I have the one ounce of lime with the one quart of water. And I just put a lid on, shake it up. These are from today's chickens. You only want to use the freshest eggs for this and they have to be clean. Let me show you. Some of our eggs come out of the coop covered in poop. <laughs> poop and mud and muck and things stuck to them. You cannot water glass those eggs. Some of them come out with these little cracks all over the shell for some reason. You can't use those either, but you use the freshest, perfect egg. We're gonna just gently lower these into the jar. So let me just show you, it's kind of crazy. You, I don't even know if the camera will pick it up, but when I move this egg around, it is cracked. It just ever so slightly has a little bit of movement in the shell. That would rot and ruin the batch. Does it ruin the whole batch? Well, I'm not certainly sure, but if I open one of the jars and it smells like rotten eggs, I'm not opening any more of them. 
hope it picks it up. There's some sort of spider web in that. There's just a really thin part or it's where the chicken dropped it out and it hit. So we're going to just start with these. It's no big deal. I'm getting between 17 and 20 eggs a day. Therefore, we're gonna be able to fill jars like this, no problem. Look at how quickly that lime has separated from the water. That isn't an issue and it doesn't fully dissolve. In fact, look at the year old ones. There's that layer of lime in the bottom. And then as I jostle it around a little, it starts flaking and falling down. None of that is the problem. In fact, that's what it's gonna look like. So we're gonna cover over these eggs and I'm going to just pour the whole jar in there for now and add eggs over the next few days. And as I need, I will continue to make mixtures, pour it in, plastic lid on top with the date. And that is all there is to liming eggs. These need to be kept in a cool, dark place. I have some really dark shelves in my pantry and that's where these have stayed. dry this time of year is extremely difficult with everything melting. <laughs> Pardon. <laughs> Our alternate heat source inside the house is actually a pellet stove. When we have a bad bag of pellets, they cannot go through the stove because of the sawdust. However, they can come into the coop and they can help absorb the moisture and then they'll just get sent out. All they are is compressed sawdust. There isn't actually any glue or chemicals inside the pellets and so they are a good way for us to try and absorb some of the moisture. Like all things on a homestead, the coop maintenance, it changes just as frequently as our season. This is the last day we'll be watering in the bowls. We actually have warmed up enough. We can go back to the other water. We have dozens and dozens upon dozens of eggs that are ready to be washed and these have been in the last week to two weeks at the most what i'm going to wash first are the ones that we actually want to boil and they're a little bit older than the other eggs and so i want to keep them separate for a minute because you want to use two week old eggs in order to hard boil them. So let me start getting these washed off. Okay, well Jessica scrubbed up 50 eggs for me right here and that's what we're gonna use in the jars over here. It's gonna be 10 per jar. So we're gonna start with those. We're gonna run some cold water on these and get these started boiling. Okay, so the method we like to use is we, to hard boil the eggs is we start out with cold water on them. We're gonna bring them up to a boil and once it starts boiling, we let them go for seven minutes and then we'll take them off the heat, let them cool down and we'll crack them from there. Thanks to my friend Jim in Alaska. He saves his egg cartons and gives them to me and it's great because then people can take eggs from the house that we're not consuming and I can move these eggs easily into the refrigerator. 
So we have our five 18 packs. This is what we need to fill the freeze dryer and we still have over 24 eggs left. So I'm gonna fill this and this is just gonna pop in the fridge. Oh, the hard boiled eggs are ready. It's gonna pop in the fridge. Okay, so the timer just went off. These are done, so we're gonna shut the heat off. And now we're just gonna let them chill out right here for five minutes. Go cool down just a little bit, and then we're gonna shock them in some ice water. We're gonna get ready and start making our brines for this. We're gonna do it two different ways. Last year, we, Jessica made a whole bunch. I can't even see I was part of it. She made a whole bunch and we ended up really not liking the pickling spice of it. So we're gonna try a couple basic, real basic, just dill. We're gonna put dill and some jalapeno in there and it's gonna be pretty simple. So let's get started on that. So one thing that we figured that we did not like last year was using the apple cider vinegar. I think it's just not the taste we wanted in our eggs. So this year we're going to try it. We're going to do some distilled white vinegar and some white distilled white vinegar and some white wine vinegar. We're going to give those a shot. So we're going to go in with four cups of vinegar to two cups of water. We're going to go in with two tablespoons of kosher salt. I'm gonna go in with four tablespoons of sugar. I put this on a medium to low heat and we're gonna bring it up to a slow simmer. Once they hit the simmer, we're gonna simmer for about 10 minutes. So we're gonna, we're gonna make this, like we said, pretty simple, right? We're gonna go half a teaspoon, oh sorry, one teaspoon of everything I got sitting here. So one teaspoon of mustard seed, one teaspoon of black peppercorns. Me and Jess get a little crazy, so we're gonna try a little bit of a lot of dill. We really like the dill, so we're gonna do one teaspoon of dill seed. We're gonna do one teaspoon of dill weed. We're also going to put in one teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. Okay, so that's it for the seasonings as far as the dry seasonings. Now we're going to, I'm going to get the garlic ready and the jalapenos cut up. So they should, with the ice cold water, just peel really nice and easy. There you have it. Here, we're gonna go with one jar of eggs with, we said the distilled white vinegar. And then we're gonna do one jar over here with the white wine vinegar. So we're gonna load those up and see how those go. One layer of eggs, and then I have jalapenos, garlic, and dill. Another layer of eggs, I'm gonna repeat. So the reason I want to pickle two sets of eggs without any seasoning or spices at all is I am looking for a shelf stable way to keep the eggs where I could just pull out a hard boiled egg and use it in a pasta salad or use it in something else. You should not, or I've heard they're really gross if you try and hard boil the limed eggs and you can't leave an egg whole and allow it to freeze dry you also can't freeze a whole egg and then hard boil it. So my thought is if I'm able to pickle them and have them shelf stable, I could use them in other recipes that I maybe don't want a dill flavor to. So 
We're gonna do two jars and see how much vinegar we like on the eggs, but they're not going to get any seasoning or spices. Okay, so we had a label and we had to play hopscotch because we're just trying to make sure we, we're going to label them correctly. We have white distilled and white wine. And that's what we're going to try. The difference is here. We want to make sure the eggs are completely submerged like this. Looks delicious. <laughs> this. We can tell that it's plain. You put plain on there, so we're not going with that's not a white Zinfandel. It's just not, not. That is not a white Zen. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so, how much? Put a little back. So I'm gonna try this one to make it a little bit stouter on the vinegar, just give it a little more of that little bite that <laughs> kind of locked you up. That's what I want. So here I'm trying to get all the seasonings that we put in the bottom, off the bottom, and I'll incorporate it all throughout the jar so that way they disperse. We have our white vinegar, white distilled vinegar and white wine vinegar and our pickling that we're going to give a shot. We're going to let them sit in the refrigerator for one week before we open them and give them a try. And we're hoping that we've come up with a good recipe that we like and enjoy in the family here because we don't want to do a whole bunch of eggs and as many eggs as we get from them chickens if we did all of them and we didn't like it that would be such a waste. So we're trying to small them out, figure out what we want, and then we'll go from there. Last week, Caleb and Destiny brought me baby chicks. The baby chicks are in my dining room right now. And as much as I love to hear their little peeps and their little sounds all day long, they're already able to get out of the bucket that they're in. So they need to be moved and moved quickly. Here in Alaska, it's still too cold for them to be without heat, and they're still too young. Even if they were inside, they still need a heat lamp. So this room that was always intended to be the tack room has become the brooder, and we're going to get the little chicks out here. I tested both of these lights. They work, so three working lights. We'll keep the other one as backup. We only need two out here, um, but sometimes the lights burn out and that could be really bad for the chick, so I like having a backup. We also don't have power in the coop. So it's a fun challenge every year to try and figure it out. But I still have this one low. We're gonna let it 
it get nice and warm in here for about an hour before we bring the chicks out because they're coming from inside the house which is super warm with the heat lamp and I want it nice and warm before we get them out here. In the meantime, I can get their water and feeder cleaned up. I hear a chicken already laying an egg. We've been out here less than an hour. Two more. Two eggs. I'm so warm. These are perfect. These are the perfect eggs for water glassing. Still a little bit warm, completely dry, completely clean, no poop, nothing on them. Perfect. So we have already done uh, five 18 packs of eggs in the freeze dryer just in the last month. They turned out so well that we actually thought we would do it again. So all that you do is you put the 18 eggs, you wanna break them up. So the 18 eggs go straight into the mixer. After you get the 18 eggs in, you just wanna break them up a little bit and that is gonna freeze dry better. And the last time from here, I loaded all of the trays and then tried to move all of them into the freezer. They made a little bit of a mess. So I already have one tray in the freezer. I have these lids for my trays. They just snap on and I'm able to stack all five trays, but I'm going to not move them around. So I'm gonna dump this straight into the freezer tray. So we're on our last batch and the freeze dryer holds 90 eggs plus the 50 eggs that we hard boiled in order to pickle those and figure out what we like. We put a two dozen pack, so 24 plus another dozen, so 36 more eggs in the refrigerator. Those will be used for freshie or if we let them age for a little bit, we could also hard boil those and figure out which pickling recipe we like, plus five or six in the lime solution today. So we dealt with a ton of eggs for one day. I'm gonna get this last one in the freezer and then show you how the freeze dried eggs actually turn out. Recently, I processed the last batch of freeze dried eggs into these Harvest Right bags and added oxygen absorbers. To do that, the process is very simple. All you do is bring up your freeze dried trays. I crumble up the eggs as I put them into the bags. I then add an oxygen absorber to each one of the bags. I seal the bags with my Harvest Right sealer and voila, there you go. From here, let me just show you when we open one of these, what our plan is. By the time I get to needing to open one of these, it's going to be because I don't have any eggs sitting around that I can turn into whatever it is I'm looking to do with them. So I would open this package remove the oxygen absorbers, and I am going to store them in a half gallon jar just in the pantry. The thought I had when I saw these is yellow gold. Like that is golden. <laughs> we have gold coming from our chickens. How do we turn this freeze dried egg back into an egg that we can cook with or we can just fry up and eat. Let me show you. The measurement for freeze dried eggs is two tablespoons of freeze dried eggs for two tablespoons of water equals one egg. So I'm going to do four because Erin and I have decided to do a taste test 
and we've just decided that we'll make egg burritos for our dinner tonight and we'll be able to use these. So that is four tablespoons of the freeze dried egg. And now I just have some cool tap water. One, two, three, four. With my little whisk, I'm gonna let the egg start absorbing the water. Setting that aside, that needs a couple of minutes. Right here is where you would go about mixing up your cake mix or whatever it was you're using these eggs for. Start preheating your pan to fry them up. It only takes a couple of minutes for it to reconstitute. But while mine reconstitute, let's get the eggs we're gonna taste test. I think we should taste test them against some year old eggs. How many of you are at home thinking today, I wanna eat a year old egg that's been on the shelf? Let's find out. With the lime eggs, you need them to give them a good rinse because we're not looking to eat the lime. So we re remove two of those. I am going to crack them just for safety's sake in a separate bowl and then whisk them over here. So <laughs> immediately the consistency of the lime eggs is very, very runny, but they have no scent to them at all. And neither does a fresh egg. A fresh egg really doesn't smell like anything. But look, that yolk is already broke apart. The egg is kind of runny. Totally fine. I want to crack the very fresh, just straight from the chicken in the last day or so eggs. I already rinsed these and float tested them so I know that these eggs are good. Look at the color difference in the fresh egg and the year old egg. Now, also look at the consistency. So I'm gonna whisk these up. They sound like water. Farm fresh this week, brand new eggs. Perfect. And then we have tried these. The consistency looks just a little bit weird in the bowl of the freeze dried egg but it is thicker. I'm gonna fry up the eggs the exact same way for all three. I think it's the only fair way to compare them. So scrambled eggs it is. Every one of the eggs is gonna get some butter in the pan. That's it, and a little bit of salt and pepper. While the butter preheats, I'm gonna get some of our fresh bacon that we smoked going in the other pan so we can have some bacon and egg and potato burritos. I'm really gonna try and get you in here. So the butter has melted. The first egg we're going to go down with, and I set the eggs behind it so I knew what was going on is the year old egg. So that ran around immediately. To each set of eggs, just a little salt and a little pepper. It doesn't smell any different than a regular egg. My pan is good and non-stick, thanks to all of that lard we use. Right back in with a little bit of butter. In with our control egg, which is just the two farm fresh eggs. See how much tighter that one stayed in the pan? butter. So 
So the freeze-dried egg has the weirdest consistency when it comes back, although I've already taste tested these, and so I know they're gonna be fine. But look at how tight that is in comparison to even the fresh eggs. While I wait on Erin to get in here and we will taste test these, I am going to go ahead and get some of our homegrown potatoes going. So I'm gonna use a little lard. To fry the potatoes up, but a little bit of butter for additional flavor. You just pop over these cans of potatoes and then you can rinse them or not, but you wanna drain them, get your fat going. Let's have a look and see if you can tell the difference. So right here, we have the year old eggs. In color comparison, they're pretty similar. Even though they looked really, really light coming out, they are similar to this. The strange part is the first time I fried up these freeze dried eggs, honestly, they, it, all by themselves, they don't look unappetizing. However, when you compare them side by side to the fresh egg versus the freeze dried egg, this looks a lot less appetizing. However, <laughs> the year old eggs look just as appetizing as everything else. I found a taste tester. <laughs> so, get on in here, big guy. You ready? So this is your control. What's control? These are your farm fresh from mm -hmm. today or this week eggs. Mm -hmm. These are your freeze dried eggs and those are your year old eggs. All of them are scrambled, all with salt and pepper, all cooked in butter. You're gonna tell me if you can taste a difference. Well, you see a difference. Or should I mix them up? No. And it should be a blind taste test. No, you can see it. Like this one has a little different. It's not as bright yellow as the rest of these two. Right. Let's start with the freeze dried eggs. Well, we'll go with a bite. Mmm. Like Jessica said, it tastes just like a real egg. Let's try it. It yeah. is a real egg. <laughs> We're gonna try this. This is the farm fresh, right? What's no. it taste like? Zero difference between those two. You have to be kidding me. No. no really? Mm -hmm. That's a year old. Literally, these were jar 3.6 to 3.9. Those are literally yeah, a year old. Smaller bite. Just smaller to make sure bite just in case he kills over, guys. No, there's no difference. You cannot tell the difference between a year old egg and an egg from this week. Uh -uh. I, I do not believe you. Very good. They're good. I think there's a slight difference, but if you did not tell me that this egg was a year old, I would not know it. I think the freeze dried eggs taste, this one has some, it's not even an aftertaste, it just isn't quite as bright as the fresh one. But the freeze dried ones taste identical to a fresh egg. They just don't look identical to the fresh egg. That's mind blowing. So we think we're just gonna mix them together. First and mix them together in a bowl in order to make our burritos. I think the moral of the story here is there are awesome ways to preserve your farm fresh eggs for very... What are you doing? I think it was the year old egg. <laughs> the moral of our story is 
is we believe that there are a multitude of ways to preserve your farm fresh eggs for a very, very long time. We're talking 30 to life here. It's like a death sentence. They say a year to 18 months on the um, limed eggs and then a regular fresh egg can sit out for weeks and then in the refrigerator it can last for months. So it's all up to you. How do you want to preserve your farm fresh eggs? We're gonna make dinner. Bliff, you're naughty. We make breakfast burritos a lot. I mean a lot, a lot, a lot. A lot of breakfast burritos. Heat up the tortilla. We have bacon and eggs and potatoes. I have some cheese and jalapeno. How do you want yours? Warm. Warm. Look at how crispy fried those potatoes get. They are all good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bacon. Not too much. Oh, that's a ton. Okay. <laughs> Did you get bacon on there? No. How is it? Oh, you made a mess. Cool. <laughs> Me and you. <clears throat> I was honestly shocked when the eggs are raw before you cook them. The texture and color is completely different. Mm -hmm. But the finished product, so weird, right? Did the measurement come out right? Did my what? On yeah. the freeze dried ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a one to one, but it's two tablespoons make one egg. It didn't stress me a bit when Caleb and Destiny showed up with the chicks because this is actually our third year raising chicks here in Alaska. And I have all of the supplies sitting in that bucket ready to go. I knew they would be dusty and dirty, and that's fine. I've just been feeding them and watering them the last couple of days out of just some kitchen bowls that I'll wash up. But I want to scrub this really well and get their water and food ready to go out. I add just a splash of organic with the mother apple cider vinegar to their water. It helps with their health and all of the things that helps them stay super hydrated. And with us changing their environment, I want to give them the opportunity to help. We're gonna check on the chicks every couple of hours for the first day here. And then if there's any sign of trouble, we'll just move them right back inside into that bucket. Everything will be fine. You know what it is. Let's go outside. Menace. <laughs> 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 
What's the story of our life? Bathing dogs several times a day just to have them in the house? Just to let them in the house. After completely recording this video and finishing everything up, Erin and I really felt like we would be remiss if we didn't share with you some of the failures that can come when you are preserving food. We have a failure in this jar of eggs and the reason we know it is twofold. Number one, look at how cloudy and yellow the water is. It should not look like that. It should be clear like this. So that is our first telltale sign that something is wrong in this jar. The other sign is <laughs> when you open it, even from here, you get a whiff of rotten egg. If we're who you watch on water glassing eggs and you have a failure like this and we don't tell you, I would feel so bad if you opened one of these eggs. So we're going to do it so you don't have to. Failure. I'm going to set aside the eggs that I don't think are it. And what I'm hoping to find is something, there it is, something with a crack in it. But let me show you. Oh, that one's not bad, but they're... That's not it. That's not it. <laughs> we continue our hunt. What? That one was nasty. <laughs> oh, there's a full blown. Uh. Uh, uh. There's a whole egg broken down in here. That one has a crumb. All of this, suffice to say, you honestly can smell the failure. I don't want the dogs or anything getting into this, so this is gonna go to the dumpster, so I just double bagged the trash. And I will wash my jar, because I'm not gonna waste the jar. But, needless to say, your water should not look like this. It should look like this. And you should just get rid of what is ever in that jar. For you guys, I opened up. But in reality, I would have just tossed everything in this jar into a bag, taken it to the dumpster, washed the jar, and moved on with my life. So if you have a failure, you're gonna smell it, you're gonna see it, you're gonna know, don't feed those eggs to your pets, your family, your children, or any one of your loved ones.